Presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Welcome in, everybody, to Mornings on Main Street, which is, my friends, this is the best week of the year. It's a short week. we got a couple of days of work. we got Thanksgiving, then Christmas officially begins. we got football. we got basketball. we got hockey. we got everything going on. So let's make the best of this short week and have a good time. All right, we got a fun show for you today. Now, the theme this week of our short shows, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, is we're going to highlight places that on Thanksgiving are having a special event where... They're going to feed the public. No questions asked. You come and eat. If you're lonely and you're hungry and you need a place to go, we're going to find those places for you this week. And we've got a really cool one in Hendersonville we're going to talk about today. And we've got one in Donaldson we're going to talk about. So we'll look forward to having all that this morning and really, really highlighting some special, wonderful people in our area who spend their days and weeks and months helping other people. We've got that for you today as well. Again, it's November 22nd. I cannot believe it's already late November of 2021. Uh, let's get on the 2022. Let's make the most of the last six weeks uh, of this year. Let's bring in my best friend, the intern, as we do every morning. Hey, buddy. Hey, Joe. How's it going, man? Your lighting looks really good today. Thank you. I appreciate it. What have you done? Oh, I just uh, spruced up the place a bit. Yeah, I think it gives my uh, plant in the background a little more ominous feeling, you know? That's uh, no pun intended, by the way, sprucing it up. I love the way you just drop those little nuggets. <laughs> it's for did you have your weekend? I did, man. Yeah, the, uh, watching the Titans lose wasn't fun. But other than that, it was relaxing. We'll get into that with Terry McCormick a little bit. Were you surprised the Titans got beat that bad? You know, I really wasn't. I saw Lance, uh, who's been on our show before. Yep. He, he tweeted something like that we could bet the boat on the Titans winning. And I know that never goes well when we do that, so... Uh, what kind of boat did he lose? I don't know. I haven't got I haven't gotten back to him on that yet. <laughs> All right. Well, more with you in just a little bit, the intern. As we do every morning at this time, let's talk with the headlines that are coming your way. And intern, one of these days, I'm going to figure this screen out. Until then, oh. <laughs> I need you to be my friend. You there? Okay. There we go. That looked good. <laughs> All right, let us edition the e edition of Main Street National delivered right to your inbox. Of course, you get the app on your phone, the latest news. And here's a prime example. Last night, three legends joined the Country Music Hall of Fame. Josh Ewers with a nice story. Uh, three that won the Country Music Hall of Fame last night in Nashville. Country singer songwriters Marty Stewart, Dean Dillon, and Hank Jr. formally received the honorary medallion, signifying their arrival in hallowed ground at the CMA Theater. 
where they put into perspective some of the more enthralling stories adorning the walls of country music history. Good Lord, that's an outstanding paragraph right there by Josh. Well done. Uh, Marty Stewart, so well-deserved. Hank Jr., I cannot believe it was not already in there. And, of course, Dean Dillon, the master songwriter, went in last night. So three people very, very deserving of getting into the Country Music Hall of Fame. So congratulations to those three men right there. Nice story here that Ashley Perham wrote. 41 veteran first responder brides thanked with free dresses. Just a really cool and nice story to start you off on a Monday. People giving back to the community, to those who give back to us so, so much all the time. Uh, and again, another another reason we live in such a great area. Look, groups work together to help homeless people during extreme cold, which was last night. Of course, we're now late November, so it's going to be cold probably all the way till next April, which I can't stand. But with these groups working together, of course, with the National Rescue Mission helping out and others helping out as well to, to do that. So that's always a nice story. If you want to help out, there's phone numbers in there, too, as well, where you can contribute or help out. The intern now actually be down at the mission this morning for the Tracy Lawrence Turkey Fry, which he does every year and feeds so many people down there. So we'll have Tracy on the show with us tomorrow talking about uh, all the stuff he's done and why he does it and how long he's been doing it, which has been a pretty long time there as well. So look forward to happen to talking to him. Uh, around Middle Tennessee, another nice story, Xavier Smith, talking about how these people came together to pay off a mortgage for the Wilson County Court-Appointed Special Advocates CASA received a donation recently that was used to pay off the organization's remaining debt on its office. A really cool story, another story, positive story of Middle Tennessee for people giving back in our community, and I love it. So I'm a big history guy. We'll get that in just a second. Uh, I want to report this story that happened last night. This is awful. Uh, if you saw a Christmas parade in Wisconsin, an SUV driver drove through the Christmas parade and reports all this morning uh, are that five were killed last night in this parade, in this just horrifying scene uh, that happened with the SUV. The driver uh, evidently is in custody, and there's video out there. I suggest you not to watch it. I watched it and didn't know I was watching it. Uh, just prayers for the family and all those affected by what happened last night in Wisconsin. Uh, just truly, truly awful. All right, today's November 22nd, and I want to tell you the story real quick. All right, so this is the title. It's the National Banner. They do a day in history you get with the E-Edition every day. It's really cool to read all this stuff that's happening. So this is 58 years ago today. 58 years ago today, President Kennedy was murdered in Texas. Now, this is the National Banner. And you see that typeset, just a big, huge headline? I had a teacher one time in college tell me that in our lifetime, you'll see that happen maybe four to five times. And this is one of those times. And I remember, I'm trying to think when uh, Reagan was shot in 81 and other headlines that popped up when the Iranian hostages were freed also in 81. So you can see it's few and far between these headlines are like this, but this is the national banner. Remember the banner came out in the afternoon. So this paper was printed November 22nd, 1963 on that Friday and President Kennedy murdered in Texas. Uh, and it talks about all what they knew at that moment, because remember, there was a lot that was going on that was falsely reported, that was underreported, that things were going on. And it's just reading this as they would have read this back in 1963 is truly is something else. So that's what you can read this morning, also in the edition of the Main Street Nashville. And we'll get to it at 720, but the Tennessee Titans uh, – yeah, overwhelmed. They lost to one of the worst teams in football, the Houston Texans. Terry McCormick will join us at 720 to talk about what's next. Look, you knew this was going to happen with the Titans. So many guys injured, so many guys out, and it just happened. So now they got to regroup. They go to the Patriots on Sunday. The Patriots are on a tear, so we'll see what happens there. And you guys know I love high school athletics. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight stories from high school foot stories, not just scores, but stories from the eight games that happened this past weekend and main on uh, with the guys at main street preps do a great job. So a lot of that's going on there. A lot of recaps. You can get that as well. So, all right, we're off and running at your headlines for today. It's going to be a fun morning coming up next. We're going to take you to Hendersonville with our good friends at cafe three, nine, three, and something special they got going on for Thanksgiving. And I cannot wait to bring 
these people on to talk about just the, their wonderful heart and what they're doing. That's all next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. It costs Tennessee more than $15 million to clean up roadside litter. It's time to keep your trash to yourself and our roadways clear because nobody trashes Tennessee. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. I thought it was good. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was no big deal. Hey, I can hold my liquor. Thought I could hold my liquor. Is your roof in need of repairs? Maybe it's time for a full roof replacement. If so, choose Middle Tennessee's number one rated roof. Tim Leaper Roofing has provided the Nashville area with outstanding residential and commercial services for nearly two decades. And with hundreds of five-star reviews, Tim Leaper Roofing has satisfied thousands of homeowners. To schedule a free and honest estimate, find us online at timleaperroofing.com. Oh my goodness. I think I've given the intern too much creative control and poetic license uh, for those commercials coming back. Thank you, intern. We'll have a talk after our, our show uh, about your attitude and things you're doing. Good job, buddy. All right, let's bring in now Tanya McPherson with Cafe 393. Now, is it Tanya or Tanya? Tanya. Tanya. All right, there we go. Good morning to you. How are you? I am great. I am great. Hey, thanks for the shout out for Waukesha, Wisconsin. Just so you know, that's very, very near and dear to my heart. That's where I was raised Ooh. my whole life. So Waukesha to Heartland is like Hendersonville to Gallatin. So that story hit us close last night. I am very sorry. And uh, I, it's awful. It's just an awful story. And I wish I'd have to bring it up. But people were wondering what happened because with the bed last night, and there's still a lot of details on and out. So I'm so sorry, Tanya, for that. I really am. Yeah, we're feeling that one. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, Cafe 393. First of all, tell me about Cafe 393 in Hendersonville. So we have been open for going on four years in February. Um, it's just kind of a spinoff. My dad and my stepmom owned a restaurant just like that in our small town of Heartland. And for years and years and years, they're like, Tanya, you just need one there. You need one there. You need one there. And finally, my mom and I were just like, okay, let's do it. And we did it in the year that we opened our restaurant in Hendersonville was the year that my dad and my stepmom had sold theirs in Heartland. So for 25 years, they had had that restaurant since I was 14 years old. And I just carbon copied what they did. It worked for them. And I was like, it's going to work for me. What was the secret to their success? And what's the secret to your success? Theirs, I guess I learned at a young age when your parents meaning all four of my parents own businesses in a small town, you are the backbone of the community. So from a small age, I think they were all just so heavily involved in community. We were the community. People would come into that restaurant and say, oh, hey, Dave, I knew your daughter is, or hey, you know, you, you don't get away with much. And it was the town meeting place. And you just felt even forever and ever that sense of community and still to this day since I'm 14 the same people go in their restaurant unless god forbid they've passed but that's exactly what I wanted to do so these people watched me grow up from the age of 14 all the way through high school and college and getting married a lot of them even came down here for my wedding so it's it's the backbone of community and I knew that that's what I was going to make 
Cafe 393. Fantastic. I mean, your passion when I met you a week ago is very contagious. And we started talking. And then the first thing you started telling me about was what you guys are doing on Thursday. It was not about your restaurant and how much you love it. It was about what you guys are doing on Thursday to feed people. And let's we're going to put a flyer up here in a moment. The intern will do that. But let's talk about why Thursday and what you're doing is important to you. Um, I guess sometimes... We live here in Hendersonville and we feel that we're, I guess, barricaded from bad things that happen. You feel that you're sheltered. You know, I knew when we picked Hendersonville to live, you felt like it's safe, nothing bad happens. But you know what? There's people that's hungry all over. And the first year that we did it, we were just barely six months in to owning the restaurant. And I just, had felt this calling and I said, mom, we got to do something. What is it that we can do? You know, we maybe couldn't give much money because we were so brand new, but we just looked and you said, you know what? We can feed people. And just that small gift of food to so many was so much that first year. We didn't have a lot of people. We maybe only fed a hundred people, but then we said, okay, well, you know, we know what to do for the next year. Let's make it even better. And so this will be our fourth year doing it. And we have, you know, food to feed about 300 people this year. Great. And, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but tell people that, I mean, if you, ha- if you need to go eat, don't feel the shame, go eat, right? No. I mean, just go, go eat, please go eat. Anybody. And last year there were people who just were out and they're like, oh, we don't have our kids. Let's go out to eat. You know, I mean, it was all walks of life, like from your empty nesters, um, but then you have the really, really heart-wrenching stories. It's mm-hmm. such an emotional day. Um, it's a day that you hear stories from all over, you know, from we're alone or we're living in our car or one man, you know, had just lost his wife after 60 years and didn't want to be alone. Like there's just stories all over the spectrum and and it just makes you feel like you did something that day that meant something so much to somebody else. That's beautiful. All right, intern, put up the flyer, what's going to go on, if you don't mind, for uh, Thursday. All right, here it is. Hosting a free Thanksgiving meal, 12 to 2.30, complete buffet meal, and fellowship for anyone who wants to attend. Uh, if you can't get together, family, friends, you are a first responder, have fallen hard times, come join us. You're welcome. Always welcome at our table. Nobody's sure about where their meal will come from. And no one should be alone. That last sentence, Tanya, always gets me. Nobody should worry about where their meal will come from, and no one should be alone. It's much more than a meal, isn't it? Oh, it's all about the community and the fellowship and and just the love that happens that day. And now so now that my kids are getting older, it it's so important for us to show kids just how to love and how to be a good servant. And, you know, while in the first couple of years, my kids may not have participated as much as I would like, they see it and they know it. And they know that it's really important to give back to your community. And usually the first ones to show up on that day are the first responders. Our police department shows up, the firefighters, the EMTs. And and I just tell them it's so important to serve those who serve you. Give back to them because you know what? Last Thanksgiving day, I had to call 911. And I said, guys, I hope I fed you that day as they're wheeling my mom away on Thanksgiving day. So just serve those who serve us and and serve those who just, just need a break or need some love or just need somewhere warm to go and just want somebody to talk to and, and not be alone. And with us, you're not going to be alone. And And I always say we're here for the fun time. I'm here for a fun time, but I just, I just want to love on you. And, and that's the way I know how to do it is through food. Beautifully said. Now this is from 12 to two 30. Are you open before that? If people want to come by? No, um, we'll just be getting ready to serve the food that day. So 12 to 2.30 there at Cafe 393, uh, and it's located right there in East Main in, in Hendersonville, so we can't miss it. No, it's in the same shopping center as Planet Fitness. I'm not going to work out that day, so they can uh, 
They, <laughs> I'd rather eat on Thursday. I'm not working out at all. Uh, Tanya, thank you. We'll keep putting this out there and we'll keep promoting it. And uh, I, I really thank you for your heart and your passion for the community and for what you're going to do on Thursday. That means so much to so many people. So thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Tanya McPherson from Cafe 393 in Hendersonville. We'll keep promoting that, promoting that, and promoting that. So that way on Thursday that if you are hungry and need a place to eat and you know somebody who does need that, you let them know and you point them in the right directions. That's what we're here for this week. That's the theme this week is that we want you guys to be somewhere on Thanksgiving and not be alone. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back. Our good friend Terry McCormick from Titan Insider will join us next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. Dental coverage may be a small investment, but it has big benefits because dental coverage and preventive oral care leads to more than a healthier smile. It leads to a healthier life overall. Delta Dental makes it easy to get the care you need. With the nation's largest network, you're more likely to find or keep a dentist you love. And with comprehensive coverage and additional discounts, you'll have benefits you love too. Make a lasting investment in your oral and overall health with coverage from Delta Dental. Visit DeltaDentalTN.com to learn more. Hi, I'm Bonnie Ryan. I'm the co-owner of Saxby's along with Lee Oliver. This is a place that mamas and daddies can be really comfortable to send their kids to for a first job. It's a place that you can have fun, feel really good about the place that you work, get paid well, have a good time. If you want to apply, you can go to applynow.com and Zaxby's will be on there. We uh, love it when we get some great folks here at Zaxby's. Welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. Thank you so much, Tanya McPherson at Cafe 393 for your time this morning and what you're doing. All right, let's switch a little gears now. I'll bring in Terry McCormick from TitanInsider.com. Uh, and Terry, I just is there any way that we can get that three hours back in our lives that we had to sit through yesterday? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Joe. You know, as far as what went wrong, I'm reminded of the words of the great philosopher, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits, who said, sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug. <laughs> what an awful game. And look, I knew we knew it was going to rain and be nasty, but my goodness, I mean, they were awful yesterday. I mean, it, I know we got all the injuries. They have all the injuries that are going on. But I, that was the worst performance I've seen out of Ryan Tannehill since Marcus Mariota was here. Yeah, it was a rough day for Tannehill. And I think some of it, I mean, and I know it all starts and ends with the quarterback. And, you know, the quarterback is going to take all the blame when things go wrong. But I think there really was something to miscommunication on a couple of those interceptions because there was one where Des Fitzpatrick broke the route out. Tannehill threw the ball inside right into the waiting arms of Desmond King, who intercepted it. And I got to think that their lack of time working together in camp and, you know, Des Fitzpatrick working more or less with the second and third group uh, during that time probably contributed something to that because, you know, that was very uncharacteristic of Ryan Tannehill yesterday to have that bad of a performance. And I think, like you hit on, the injuries. You know, there's only so many times you can go to the well. You know, they, they, they pride themselves on next man up, but at some point it just runs out. You know, you, you remove – Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown from the lineup. It's like taking Mantle and Maris out and still expecting to hit home runs. 
<laughs> That's a great way to put it. You know, you think about it. Teddy Hill started the season, all the excitement of having Josh Reynolds, Julio Jones, and A.J. Brown. Then he goes to the game yesterday with Terry McCormick, Joe Dubin, and the intern. I mean, there is – that's a huge drop off from what you thought you would have, what, seven, eight weeks ago. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, I know that they've got this game with the Patriots coming up, and they're now the hottest team in the league. They've taken over the AFC East lead. But beyond that, I think is what they have to look forward to the most, and that's the bye week, because the bye comes very late this year for the Titans. And I think they, they can't probably can't wait to have that week off to have a chance to heal up, maybe get some of these guys back. You know, the defense yesterday, they played well. I mean, the offense put them in some bad situations, so it's not that. But, you know, the Texans were just a terrible football team. But, Terry, you've seen this for a long time. Titans have games like this every single year. They had it with, I know, but not usually two or three times during the season. But the Jets game was like this, and the Texas game was like this. They often play down or up to the competition. And yesterday was the prime example of that. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you come off of wins over the Chiefs and the Bills and the Rams, teams that people are talking about as Super Bowl contenders, and then you lose to the Texans after losing to the Jets earlier in the year. It's one of those things where it's hard to figure out. You know, the only thing that really you can kind of chalk it up to is the fact that, you know, in the NFL, it's just different. It's, you know, if Vanderbilt and Georgia line up and play 50 times, Georgia's going to beat Vanderbilt 50 times. <laughs> but if the Texans and the Titans line up and play 50 times, the Texans are going to win their fair share. They may win, win eight or 10 times, and they won yesterday. So I think that's a situation where, as a professional player, you have to always be on your guard and know that anybody can get you at any time if you're not prepared to play. And certainly the Titans – Learned that lesson yesterday. They they were not prepared to play compared to the way the Texans played. Look at you doing double duty, taking pictures out of the press box. Uh, I knew in the first part of the game when A.J. Brown got hurt that this was going to be a long, long day for them. Yeah, A.J., he came back from the hand injury that he suffered there on the first series and then later went out and did not return with a chest injury that took place, I think it was late in the third quarter. So, you know, you play in the whole fourth quarter needing – two scores for a good part of that without any of your top receivers and of course without Derrick Henry. So the Titans certainly behind the eight ball there. And, you know, with the weapons that they had at their disposal, just wasn't going to happen. You know, it's funny. People are really upset that they got beat yesterday, but if you're going back to before the first game gets the Cardinals and said, all right, I will give you eight and three after week 11, 99.9% of the Titans fans would have taken that. No doubt about it. You know, I, I guess it's just, you know, how it looks. Because, you know, if you'd said they're going to be 8-3, and three, everybody would have taken that. But if you said they're going to lose to the Texans and the Jets, everybody would have been like, what? <laughs> so, you know, it just shows you how crazy the NFL can be. And like I said, this team right now, they're beaten down. They're, they're, they've are they got a lot of guys who are hurt, a lot of guys who are out, you know, and I, Right now, they're still hanging on to that number one seed in the AFC despite yesterday's loss. But the truth of the matter is they've got to get some guys back if they want to do anything and do some damage in the playoffs uh, once they get there. So you think after the bye week, which is in two weeks, when they get back, A.J., Julio, Bud Dupree, all these guys could and maybe should be back? I think so. I think you'll see most of those guys get back. You know, they – guard the injuries over there now like uh, it's, you know, something from the CIA and, and it doesn't really get out and, and get around. But uh, I think they'll try to get some of those guys back. You know, injured reserve is different now than it used to be. It doesn't mean a guy's gone for the year. It means he's gone for at least three weeks. So I think after the bye, they would like to have Julio Jones back. I think A.J. Brown's situation is going to be monitored really closely this week. And then the Bud Dupree situation, you know, that just kind of, you know, appeared last week out of nowhere where he went out with an abdomen injury very early in that game uh, last week and against the Saints. And then, you know, didn't practice all week. Then all of a sudden he lands on injured reserve. So, yeah. you know, they haven't gotten a lot out of him this year. But uh, this is a team that certainly has had more than its share of injuries. And they've got to start getting some of those guys back for the stretch run. 
You know, I don't really feel old in most things that go on in my life, but yesterday seeing Jeff Fisher in the ring of honor, because Terry, I, I vividly remember us I'm standing next to you and covering when Jeff Fisher coached the Titans, and now he's in the ring of honor. It's just time flies. But again, him and Floyd Reese well deserved to go in the ring of honor. No doubt about it. They were the architects of the Super Bowl team that the Titans had in 99. But Joe, you know this more than I do, or as much as I do. You know, when this team first came here, you know, initially in 97 and 98, there was not this love affair. There was a referendum that people, uh, you know, wanted, you know, a lot of people didn't want right. the NFL to come to Nashville. They said, you know, we don't need it, this, that, the other. They were afraid, you know, of increased taxes on their property taxes, things like that. And when they got here, you know, it was the work of people like Floyd Reese and Jeff Fisher that went out in the public and helped sell the NFL and pro football to Nashville, Tennessee. And they were a big part just beyond the wins and losses of why the Titans have been successful here. Yeah, and it's just so weird just to see, because, uh, again, I vividly remember him talking to us after practice and the fact that you fast forward now. I mean, Fisher's been gone since 2010 coaching the team. So it's it's been, what, 12 seasons now? Yeah, 12 seasons. And Reese left after the 2006 season. So been a long time, but, you know, I guess it just shows that we're getting old, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting old there. And, boy, we could do a whole show about – Jeff Fisher in practice. You know, it's funny, before I let you go here, back in the day with Jeff, this is what I loved about Jeff when we were there. Now, if you go to cover a practice, you get 10 minutes. Usually most of that's the stretch period. When Jeff Fisher was there, he would let you shoot and report whatever you wanted. But if he didn't want you to do it, he'd walk over and say, hey, do you mind turning your cameras off for this one play? And you would, and you would do it because they were being so nice. But it's crazy. When I think of Fisher, I think of all the open practices and how much access we had. And now – Man, it's hard to get any access. No, you're exactly right. It's really turned into a thing where it's like we're on the grounds of the Kremlin or something, you know, <laughs> nowadays, but uh, compared to what it was under Fisher. And, you know, and the other thing, too, was, you know, Fisher and Floyd both, you know, at the start of practice while the players were doing stretch, they'd stand over there with a group of us reporters and just kind of shoot the bull for five yep. or ten minutes. And that's and that's where you get a lot of these great stories, you know, that, that – uh, they would tell you from days past, of you know, when they were in Houston or when they played college football or that sort of thing. And that's how you develop relationships. And, and I'm very, really grateful for, you know, those times that we had uh, covering this team in the early days. That's a great way of putting it. All right, Terry, thank you. We'll talk to you next week. I'm going to take on the Patriots and another big game for the Titans, man. Titan Insider, we found the information with Terry McCormick. Thanks, Terry. See you, Joe. All right, buddy. Terry McCormick again. Great job of Titan Insider. The Titans are eight and three, still two games up in the AFC South. So I look, I know y'all are upset they got beat, but don't panic because they still got a great shot of winning the division and getting deep in the playoffs. All right, we'll come back, take a break. We'll tell you about another great restaurant that's having another wonderful and opening their heart event coming to you on Thursday as we spread the cheer this morning. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. for Coach's Night Out every Wednesday at 6.30 with Tennessee Sports Writers Hall of Famer Tommy Bryan. Hill, another big regional game. Maplewood at Friendship Christian. That's going to be a 7.30 kick. Lebanon at Lincoln County. Watertown at Upperman. And Mount Julia Christian is idle this week. You know, he was he was a big booster offense as well. I mean, he's a running threat and can, and can throw it. And uh, so, I mean, he's, on a, he's, he's a big part of what we're going to do offensively coming in. We, we've talked a couple of times that maybe the off week came at a really good time for your football team. Have, have, have you been able to take advantage of this off time and do a lot of work on Clover? I, I think we, de we definitely have. And, and obviously, off week last week was really good because we got a lot of work on the field. Looking forward to it. A, a good Saturday for college football. Uh, Big time football in a small college setting. No slash in the field on Saturday. Tim, as always, thanks for the visit. Pat. Thank you. Go Phoenix. Tim Mathis, head coach at the Cumberland University, with us here on the third and final segment of Coaches Night Out Live from Town Square Social. Join us in person at Town Square Social in Lebanon for dinner, or you can join us online at Wilson Post Facebook or Wilson County TV.
right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street as we get you off and running on November 22nd, 2021. All right, we had earlier, we had Cafe 393 in Hendersonville on about their special event. Let's switch gears and go across the way over to Donaldson and bring in Mark Dickerson at the Donaldson Cafe and Catering, one of my favorite people. Hey, Mark. Hey, good morning. How are you, man? I'm doing well. All right, again, Thursday, you've done this for quite a while, man, and I've had the privilege to help you out and serve some of this food. But again, you're opening up your hearts and your store and your business on Thanksgiving. Tell us what all you have on Thanksgiving. Well, we've got a traditional Thanksgiving fair on uh, on, on Thursday here uh, at Donaldson Cafe. We're doing uh, turkey, dressing, uh, mashed potatoes, gravy, green beans, uh, get you a slice of pumpkin pie, and the best part about it is it's all free. You did this last year. You've done it several years now. No questions asked like we had from Tanya on a Cafe 393. You just want people to be fed and be with people on Thursday, don't you? Absolutely. If you don't have a plate of food or you don't have a place to go, come on down to Donaldson Cafe. Um, this is our fifth year for doing this. All right, Mark, tell me, I know all about Donaldson Cafe, but tell the folks out there in, in the streaming land what Donald, Donaldson Cafe is, where you're located, and what all you guys do. Uh, well, we're Donaldson Cafe and Catering. We, we do do catering events also. Been real busy Thanksgiving. Got some things even lined up for the holidays. We're located inside 50 Forward, uh, which is out at 108 Donaldson Pike. Um, in Donaldson, kind of across from uh, Donaldson Bowling Alley. Um, we are inside that building. Um, so all you got to do is come over this way, 108 Donaldson Pike, 50 forward, come in. Uh, we'll also have a drive through available that day. So we'll really have two options for diners. They can drive through and pick up the meals, or they can come in and, and fellowship. Uh, it's going to be fun. We've got music. We'll do some giveaways, uh, maybe get you out here and strum a little bit on that guitar. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get people to show up, not go away, but I am going <laughs> to play a little guitar on, on Thursday. And like I asked Tanya earlier from Cafe 393, Mark, why is this so important that you give back to the community? It's just it's just what we do. We uh, we like to pay it forward. We like to give back. And, you know, that that's just something that Donaldson Cafe has always always took took pride in um when we started this the very first year we didn't even know if people would come uh, uh chef kevin and myself were sitting at home uh and really we didn't have much of a place to go we didn't want to dirty up our kitchen in the house so i said let's go down to the cafe and cook our turkey there <laughs> we put out online that day if you didn't have a plate of food a place to go come eat with us had about a hundred people and we did what we wanted to do. Last year, we served close to 800. We're preparing for 1,000 people uh, this year. So uh, we better get some people over here. Right. Also, you've had to help the community. There have been businesses that have donated turkeys to you, correct? Turkeys, uh, yes. Uh, we've had 20 turkeys here, 20 turkeys there. I believe House Realty uh, uh, have donated turkeys for us. We've got... Uh, uh, 20 more yesterday from someone chef kevin is just about tired of deboning and <laughs> cooking turkeys uh but we've we've been very fortunate we've had some generous donations from uh packards bp from air trust hvac um they've really helped us out this year so uh we appreciate all the all the generous folks within our community so it's just a way for for us to give back come eat come eat free what time is the event on Thursday? Let's see. We'll start serving about 11 o'clock, um, and we'll go to 3. Like I said, we've got food for a 1,000 folks. Um, to me, I still can't wrap my head around that, really. I'm thinking a 1,000 people. I hope they don't all show up at once. But <laughs> we've got other, other things going on. Um, we're taking food over to uh, the Hermitage Precinct for the police officers, officers there. Uh, we've got food going out to uh, Summit Hospital, to the uh, ER uh, workers over there. So we're trying to hit some of the first responders, the, the really important people within our community who help us out, uh, doing for them because they do so much for us as well. Amen. Preach that. And again, let's tell what we said earlier. No questions asked. Just come eat. No. 
Uh, and, and I tell, we've talked about this last year, Mark, there were some people that showed up that were embarrassed and, and ashamed that they had to be there. And yeah. that's, there's no judging. I mean, this is come no, eat. No, we want no, you to, please. we want you to be fed. No, this is Thanksgiving. It's a, it's a time for giving thankful and we're thankful that we can do this. No, absolutely. No question. Come down. And, you know, uh, a couple of folks have called and said, well, well, you know, I've got five people or I've got six people in my family you know, just come on, we're going to feed you. And like I said, they can come in house and eat with us, or uh, we can give them the hot meals package uh, by person to go. So we'll be packaging them up to, to go. It'd be a single meal out the door. Um, but with all the fixings, turkey dressing, like I said, pumpkin pie, it's uh, it's going to be delicious. Somebody asking if they could just drop off a donation, uh, right. just combine CU, would that work? We'll be taking love offerings, donations that day. Uh, they can donate to us uh, on, um, uh, we've got a PayPal uh, page set up for donations, Donaldson Cafe. Uh, I've got, we're taking donations through Venmo. So uh, come down, just give us some money. We, we appreciate it because that's really how we do this. Right. We also did this at Easter uh, we served, I think, uh, about seven to eight hundred on Easter too, strictly drive through. This pandemic thought it was going to get us, but we have not let it do it. Uh, yes. You know, we we opened it up to a drive through. We're not, we're like we're not going to stop. So last year the pandemic got us too. We had to just do all drive through. So, um, but this year we're opening up our dining room. We got capacity for 150 people in there, safely seated. Um, so come on in. Fantastic, man. I love your heart. You know what I think about you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We'll continue promoting this, getting the good word out there because we want people to be fed. Mark Diggerson, Dawson Cafe and Catering. Thank you, Mark. Thank y'all. We'll see you. All right. That's awesome. Nearly a thousand people. They can be fed on Thursday. We're going to make sure everybody in Middle Tennessee is going to get fed on Thursday one way or or another. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tanya, earlier from Cafe 393 for joining us and talking about what you guys are doing. We'll keep doing that. And if you guys know other places out there that are doing this, because I've checked some off on uh, on the event pages and other things, let me know. Send us a note. Let me know. We can help promote that as well. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with the best friend of the show. It's Jason Gooseby. We're watching. We're all watching. Mornings on Main Street. Back with more next. <music> you'll see there's an area that's the Delta Dental Kid Zone. Mm -hmm. And that's been there pretty much since they opened the Preds opened that open for business. And so that's one of the things. But you know, if you look at in our in our case, how do we uh, match up with charities that have value across the state? And then the other thing is is how do we match up with partners that are true community partners? And if you look at what the Preds give back to the community right. and the things they do for kids all over, how do you match up with a better partner than in the Nashville area than the Preds? I mean, it, it's hard to beat them, really. And uh, entertainment-wise, it's hard to beat them just showing up to the game. I mean, it, it's almost an assault on your senses. It's, <laughs> it isn't. It's <laughs> Vegas and everything else rolled into one with lights and cameras and everything going. So, But you've got such a good partnership with them that when I think of the Preds, I almost think of Delta Dental because of everything you guys do with them. Yeah, I would, we would love to know that that's what people think. If, if, if everybody walks through the door and thinks, well, you know, who is their partner? The first partner I want to think of is Delta Dental. Welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. 
as we get you off and rolling on November 22nd, 2021. All right, as we do every week at 740-ish, let's bring in uh, a true character. And his lighting looks better this week. He's getting better at doing this. It's Jason Goosby with the inside scoop of Wilson County and the world. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. Look at you. Your lighting is getting better. I turned more lights on. Who knew that would work? I know. And also, I like the, the curtains behind you. Now, do you steal that from Days In or what? Uh, you better watch out. My wife picked those. <laughs> you better watch out. She knows where you live, Big Jim. Oh, my goodness. So what's going on, man? Uh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a cortisone shot in my knee at 9 o'clock. Is that what we, I came on to talk about? Well, so you that, don't do anything. How'd you hurt your knee? <laughs> <laughs> Old age, man. Old age. It just happens. No, I'm getting uh, – seriously, I am getting one, though. I have to get one every – you know, I rough basketball. I don't know if I knew, you knew this about me, but uh, I have to get one every season to start the season. It lasts throughout the year, so. Uh, what do you find time to do the inside scoop and rough basketball and real estate, man? What, when do you slow down? I just don't believe in sitting around a whole lot, man. So – <laughs> That's good. All right. What else is new for us this week? <laughs> okay. Well, we have a uh, over at the 236 exit, the South Hartman exit in Lebanon. I should clarify in Lebanon. To the south of that, as South Hartman goes over and connects into 231 South, uh, there's been a lot of uh, blasting, a lot of pop laying going on over there. And I've had a lot of people contact me and ask me uh, what's happening over there. And um, they're laying they're laying sewer pipe, and but what is going on over there? Um, and just broke break kind of breaking just happened this last week. The city uh, voted and passed the rezoning of 124 acres um, to become North Barton Village. Ooh. And, that's going to be over there, Big Joe, to ch try to help some of the viewers in their mind. This is going to be on the side of the interstate where Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance uh, is and the Physicians Plaza and, and and where those are located. So if you're coming from Nashville, going out, it's on the right-hand side. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So another so, 100, so 124 acres, if there are 800 houses, uh, what, mixed use, what's going to happen here? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so uh, 600 apartments. Uh 438 townhomes, 26 duplexes, and and I know the listeners are going, ah, you know, because we people don't like those coming in for whatever reason. I will not make a comment like I did a couple weeks ago, made some people mad. Um, but uh, the good news is, all right, so the good news is the road frontage along um, South Hartman there most of that is going to be mixed use commercial. So there is a, the people of Lebanon are really uh, starving. I say this, I, I say it and it's a pun, but it's true. They're starving for things like uh, um, restaurants, uh, food, you know, more, more food options and shopping. And so uh, I hear that all the time. I wish we had more places to shop. I wish we had more places to eat. So with those, with that, uh, with part of the North Barton Village being commercial, uh, there's a chance that there'll be some of those things uh, come in there. So, but, you know, it's duplex could mean, I mean, I've seen duplexes that are worth right. half a million dollars. I mean, <laughs> right, so yeah. it's, you know, we, I lived in duplex growing up because we didn't have any money, but I mean, it was still my home, right? Right, right. And there are duplexes that can be that can cost a whole lot of money. I mean, what we're, we're talking about right now, I mean, there, there are townhomes in, in, in Lebanon that are priced over $300,000 right now. So there's, it's just like with a car, you can, you can drive a Cadillac or you can drive a Kia, you know, they're not all, they're not right. all the same. And so, uh, and duplexes, uh, duplexes just means what it means. A duplex, there are duplexes in, in my use for an example, five Oaks is a, 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 one of our nicer neighborhoods here in Lebanon and there are duplexes over there that are very, very nice. Yes. So. I, I'm with you. On, and I don't know, but people are forever are, I mean, I remember my grandmother used to complain about houses that were going in down the street. So we're, they're going to complain forever regardless of what's, but people got to have a place to live. Right. 
Right. And if you don't, if we didn't buy, you know, and one of the number one, the number one, not one of them, but the number one complaint I hear is about affordability of homes. Well, and people that are born here, you can't stay here because things are too expensive. Well, just just make a rule where the only thing you can build is single family housing, you know, and you'll see the housing prices go up even further because because these are cheaper options, the townhomes and and du duplexes a lot of times are um more affordable options because you can put more you can put more living space on less acreage and so there there are more affordable options than single family homes so well uh, you know we've been talking for for what a year two year there's no inventory you know where there's no inventory there's no house and then we get houses that are coming in, it's like well we don't want them <laughs> I was like, I, what's, what's going on here I, you know I, I, you're a believer big joe i always just think about the israelites in the desert after moses brought them out and they're like well you brought us out here to die what's wrong with you i mean they, <laughs> they people are fickle man we're i call them squirrels we change. We just change our mind like a squirrel changes directions. If you ever watches, right? It. We, we are we are squirrels, man. We we say we we say some of the some of the same people that that oh we're building too fast. They're the same people that ask me when are we going to get a Costco? When are we going to get a Target? I'm like, dude, you can't have it both, and you can't have both. <laughs> right. Well, look at Murfreesboro. They they just now got a Costco. Right. Right. Back and, in and, July. I mean, so it's not, it, this is a process that happens over a time. It, it takes a while. Yeah. And, and, you know, it does. And, and, and but trust me, it's happening fast enough for me. Uh, as I watch it's, uh, and I get it. People are, people are a little overwhelmed because everything there's every little green spot of land, man, is, is there's bulldozers coming in there and they're building stuff. And we were just in a slowdown for a long time after the Great Recession, after that crash. And what that did was put a lot of uh, it put a lot of builders out of business. And, and and it's still taking years for some of those guys to get back in business. And we we were behind on building homes. Uh, and so now now we're trying to catch up. But about, and, and every article that I read says we're still four to five years away to having enough. Inventory. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're exactly right. And also, and do my real estate license, getting the test. Yeah. They really harp about the 2008 collapse and the building collapse and all that stuff. That's really a huge point with them. Right. It, it is. It, it's a. Uh, I think when we look back over the course of our lives and we look at kind of uh, uh, significant things on the timeline, there there'll be a little dot for 2008, 2009. You know. You're right. Because it did. It changed. And, and, and so one of the things I think a lot of us don't realize, well, you know, well, where did all those people go after after 2008, 2009? A lot of people started doubling up, started living with family members, uh, making use of basements, maybe in their, you know. Uh, and then now that there is a great job market, as we know, uh, and people that want to work can get back to work. And people are coming out of. Uh, People are coming out of basements and they're saying, Hey, we're not living with Aunt Gwen anymore. And uh, right. <laughs> she gets on my nerves. And uh, so they're going and finding individual housing now. It happens. All right. Don't go anywhere. You're, as we do every Monday, <laughs> celebrity. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Celebrity birthdays with you and the intern. That's next. So stay right there. All right. Back with more. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. Talking Trash, the show that's going to end littering. Brought to you by Nobody Trashes Tennessee. How was that? That fast part, that the end felt rushed. I'm going to do it one more time, Claire. 
Talking Trash, the show that's going to end littering. Brought to you by Nobody Trashes Tennessee. Ooh, how was that? Claire, that sound about right? It felt good to me. She feels me. Nobody trashes Tennessee on my watch. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. <laughs> you really good try. There aren't any cops around. I didn't think there were any cops around. I drink and drive all the time. Sir. Sir, you've been in a serious crash. I'm just gonna hang on, okay? Come here, sir. You are right All right, welcome back. There he is. Oh, yeah, the trifecta. The intern, Gillsby. Time for celebrity birthdays. We ready? Let's do it. Yes. All right, uh, Jason, because you are the guest, you will go first today. All right. Celebrity birthdays. You got upset last week you got beat. That'd be bad. He, I got throttled. All right, first <laughs> up is actress Jamie Lee Curtis. How old is Jamie Lee Curtis? Oh, she just had a big movie that's come out here recently. I would say Jamie Lee Curtis and all her hotness is a hot 60. In turn. I'm going to say 63. 63, exactly. Look, Jason, I'm sorry. I know people come on here, they try. Hey, and Don't apologize for your success. <laughs> you should have learned that in watching the Godfather movies. You're right. All right, next up is... Actor Mark Ruffalo. He plays the Hulk. Yeah. I said I get very angry when I play Justin intern. Uh let's see. Mark Ruffalo. I was gonna say a joke of like, are you turning green or is that just your teeth? That's an old joke. Oh no, <laughs> Joe. Uh Mark Ruffalo, he's probably a say 55. Ooh, I was gonna say 57. 57 intern? He mm -hmm. is 54, so Gooseby's on the map. Ooh. Good job there. Uh, all right, next is, oh, actress Scarlett Johansson. She does one of those little characters too, doesn't she? Yeah, she runs yeah she's a... Uh, Viper or... Black, is she Black Widow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay. And well, she's such a pretty lady. Uh, so yeah, that didn't sound weird, did it? Uh, let's see, Scarlett is 34. Five. I'm going to say Scarlet probably is. Mm, 35 is a good one. I'm going to say 31. She's, he's, she's 37. So mm. Gillsby's up 2 1. Mm. Intern, you're going the wrong way. Uh, Justin Bieber's wife, Haley Bieber. Oh, gosh. I have, what, about 14? No. <laughs> God. She had to sign papers. Her parents had to get her signed papers, right? For her to get married. Uh, Haley Bieber, I, I don't know, 20, uh, 21. I don't know. I'm going to say 24. 25? Yeah. You guys are tied at two. All right, here we go. Go down the line. Oh, guitar actor. Guitarist actor, Little Steven of the E Street Band, Sopranos. How old is Little Steven? Uh, 72. Two. I'm gonna go 68. 71. Mm. You guys have gotten them all. Good job. Three to two. Uh Jason Gillsby's up. Uh lead singer of Jason and the Scorchers, Jason Ringenberg, Nashville native, yeah. <clears throat> very popular band. You got yeah, a song for us? Yeah, sing a uh, song for us. So I'll yeah, a song one. for you. It's uh don't go breaking my heart. I wouldn't if I tried. <laughs> nice. He's Farmer Jason now. He does kids. He is songs. Farmer Jason. Uh, he is. Uh, he is uh, fifty-four. I'm gonna go fifty-six. He's sixty-three. Oh, oh wow! All right, we're so Gooseby up three to two. Let's roll through these real quick here. We find some more. Uh, lightning round. Yeah, lightning round. Lightning round. God, a lot of people I've never heard of that think they're famous. Oh, we've heard of these people. How old is Billie Jean King, the tennis player? 
Billie Jean King is uh, 80. Uh, 71. 78. Goosby, mm. you win it. Wow. Four yes. Four to two. Good job. The last one we had was Boris Becker. You might take a guess at Boris um, Becker. I'll do 54. Yeah, uh, Boris Becker, yeah, he's uh, 57. 54 dead on. Way to fight to the end, intern. Jason, you win four to three. Rally. Congratulations, brother. All right. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to you, man, to you and your family. Uh, thank you. You too, buddy. All right. See ya. Intern, as always, good job. You'll get better, but you win some, you lose most. I got two on the head, but you're right. But tomorrow's another day. Thanks, It Bill. is. All right. Thanks for all you do, intern. All right. That's our show for today, November 22nd, 2021. Uh, another fun show on tap for tomorrow. More restaurants that are opening up their hearts and their businesses to feed all of us on Thursday. We'll get you some more on that as well. As we leave you with this today, remember to smile, let people in traffic open doors, be nice. And also this, no one ever went broke by giving. We'll see you tomorrow.